On Sunday, June 25th, over 150 Santa Cruz community members and Land Trust supporters got together to celebrate the launch of the Land Trust's new five-year conservation roadmap. This roadmap charts out the initiatives and projects that will shape the Land Trust's work across the county. We're excited to share a few highlights from the event. In this clip, we're joined by Land Trust Executive Director Sarah Newkirk and Mariah Roberts, Executive Director of County Parks Friends, as they talk about the Land Trust's fourth strategic priority, increasing regional public investment and capacity for conservation lands management in Santa Cruz County. Um, you just heard my colleagues talking about the, the bold and ambitious work that we have in front of us over the next five years. And it is bold, and it is ambitious, and part of our issue is how are we going to keep the great news is, as you heard Mary say in, 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 her, in her remarks, that uh, the state's values are very much aligned with our values. Uh, the wildlife work, the agricultural work, the equity work are all supported by the state's values. We have the state's 30 by 30 program, which is dedicated to preserving 30% of the state's biodiversity by the year 2030. And unlike in other areas of the country, they're putting their money where their mouth is. And the state is literally funneling billions of, that's a B billions, billions of dollars of funding into conserving 30% of our biodiversity by 2030. Um, they're similarly invested in supporting equitable access to open spaces in a capital sense. And what I mean by that is we, there will be plenty of money, hopefully, available through the state to conserve lands and to build trails. What there might not be enough money for us to do is to steward those lands and to steward those trails and to take care of the things that we already own and that we've already protected. How many of you would buy a house and then not clean it up? <laughs> and not mow your lawn? Or if you have a lawn. I'm from, I'm from the East Coast where we have such things as lawns. Um, but none of us would think of doing that. And none of us should think that when we swim, protect lands, we should fail to steward them. But there aren't obvious flows of funding for us to do that. And so our fourth strategic priority in our five years to 50 roadmap is to ensure that there's regional public investment in, in capacity for maintaining our conservation lands in Santa Cruz County. Um, it's not just the land trusts whose work is implicated by this need. It's a, a tremendously strong need for our partners at County Parks, and I have with me Mariah Roberts, who's the Executive Director of County Parks Friends. Uh, but County Parks, State Parks, our, our various city parks, we have a tremendously uh, uh, active group of environmental organizations in Santa Cruz County, all of whose work is not adequately supported by our, our state public funding streams which is why we need to generate additional local public money. The Land Trust is currently supporting, or is currently exploring, I'm sorry, a local parcel tax that might appear on the November 2024 ballot. But that's not the only route to fixing this problem. We are, we are uh, exploring a lot of different options simultaneously. What we do know is that there is a tremendous need to be met here. There's a tremendous need for public resources to help us steward. The, the, and, and really, it's a profound obligation, profound and perpetual obligation to take care of the natural working lands and public access lands that we have undertaken to protect in Santa Cruz County. And the, and the only way for us to uh, stand by that profound and perpetual obligation is to increase our regional capacity to steward those things. So I would like to introduce my colleague, Mariah Roberts, who is the executive director. 
Ministry of County Health Affairs and she'll talk about the County Health perspective on this. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having us, Sarah, and thank you just for this forum to bring attention to something that I think we all kind of know, kind of feel, but are not quite sure we know the details about. First, we know for sure that these lands, these places, these beaches, these trails are a huge part of why we all live here. Right? They're part of our identity, they're part of what gives value to our days. That I feel whenever I go and talk with folks is something we all know. We all know. We love this place. Um, one thing that people are confused by and we talk about a lot is, but you know, why, why isn't that trail open? Why isn't there another bathroom or a bathroom in that park, right? Right. <clears throat> Why don't we have rangers? Why don't there are so many things that we might see in nearby communities and other communities that, that don't quite make sense here? And so as the executive director of County Park Friends, we're the nonprofit partner to our countywide park system. And we look at that as really being responsible for everybody in the county. That includes cities, that includes towns, that includes areas. What we have to do is really look at the hard facts, and so here's part of why I think Sarah was hoping that I could share some of these numbers. They're really terrible. We have, we have about, <clears throat> if you take all the money, the public funding is on average for our assets residents in this county, for our parks professionals to maintain, to care for, and to engage with us, they have about $95 person per year. That's, and I think, well, maybe that's just how it is. So we'll go to San Mateo, and the number is about $583 per person. Let's take a deep breath. <laughs> then just go to Santa Clara, where it's $800 and some sum per, per person, right? So, so what we're talking about is public funding streams so that when the land trust has invested, and has caretaken this beautiful place and has opened it up and then says, you know, we want to go on to the next thing. There isn't right now a fully funded public partner who can say, we got you. We got you back. Um, really quick, I want to share, you know, those are numbers. I want to share what that means on the ground. And what we do is really try to listen as much as possible to a wide diversity of our neighbors and friends to really learn what does that mean. What having only $95 per resident means is a lot, a lot of kids in our community who do not know how to swim. Don't know how to swim because there aren't any sliding scale public parks. It means a lot of people who have never been to the beach. It means a lot of people who don't have that kind of basic access to these incredible places that make our community so wonderful. And then you just expand on that. So I guess, <clears throat> you know, to have this opportunity to have a, a partner like the land trust who's looking out strategically, who's looking at the long game, who's saying, you know, if we're really going to make a difference, we need to make sure that all parts of our community are whole and safe and strong, and that includes the public funding, is really important. So that's what I was here to say. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.